All right, everybody, welcome to Rana's Raider. Check out where I am, one of my favorite venues, Villa Concert Center, here at the Grand National F100 show. It is just epic. I am excited. I'm so excited to see the F100. This is the first show, so this is extra special for me. And I'm here, of course, with Joe Carpenter. Man, how's it going? It's going great. It's the going show great. started. It's the only event you'll ever go to where spectators arrive before the event's ready. Yep, that's true. I mean, true. they're so excited. It takes a while to get the trucks in, but they're at the gate, lined up. There was lined up. I was here an hour ago, super early. Two, three hundred people in line. People are lined up, and I said, wow, this is going to be a nice, long day, and what better place than right here? Pigeon Forge, Tennessee is wonderful. Uh, we'll never move. It literally is within one day's drive of 75% of the population of the United States. Wow. And that's not only the, the beautiful mountains, the wonderful people, the hotels and restaurants, the combination can't be beat. We'll never move. That's why I love it. That's why I'm here. Behind us, Joe, I mean, this is the F100 Grand Nationals. It's awesome. Rain and I were just talking about the, be a busy the, day, Joe. the, the foundation <laughs> of the show. And uh, the show was founded on the 53 to 56 Ford trucks. In 1979, the first show that Pat Ford had in Chimney Rock, North Carolina, it was about these trucks and only these trucks. Um, the 53 to 56 is the most popular truck. It's the one that people really come to see. And Raina was asking me about the differences. How can you tell the difference between a 53, 54, 55, and 56? Yeah. Well, first, right here behind me is a beautiful... 1953 Ford. Okay. The 53, 54, 55 have got one thing in common, and they're referred to as slant caps. And the reason for that is your pillar here, your windshield pillar, is at an angle. In contrast to a 56, which is a, which is a year by itself, uh -huh. it has a straight pillar and a wraparound windshield. The slant cab has a relatively flat windshield, it's a slight curve. And then the other, did, the sheet metal is the, the same on the 53 and 56, but the grills are different. So the first thing you, you see is the grill. A 56 has a grill that has a little, little. V? Yeah, it, it's like a peak or a beak. A beak, yeah. A beak. The 53. That's the 54. Guys, what is, one of the, this truck, one of y'all, uh, he's not here. Okay. Well, the 55 right. has the V. The 55 has the V, okay. The 55 has the V. And, and then it has the floating emblem. You see, it's it's actually not... It's not it's, attached, yeah. It's both on a bracket. That's extremely unique, very popular. Then you have that here, you have... <laughs> the 54 is unique. So, it, it's a it's a year that has a very unique grill because not only is the grill different, but your valence panel behind your bumper is different as well because you have you have the hole cut out to accept the grill. So 54 is, is, is unique that way. They're they're very different. They're very different. They Just actually, one year apart, but these trucks right. are very different at the front. Well, the, the original trucks, the springs are different, different lengths for different years. Uh, I think they, the, the 56 has a longer spring. 55 and 56 have a longer spring. Um, they have a 53, 12-volt wasn't, wasn't around to 55. Okay. So if you have one of those trucks, a 53 or a 54, you got a 6-volt system, you, might, you have to change that when you put a new motor in. But those are some unique, th unique things about these. But they all share the same hood, front, rear fenders, bed, and running boards, and tailgate. 53, 54, 55, 56. And that created a whole uh, industry in reproduction parts. And those vendors, in combination with this, has built, has built this show. Yeah. That's what it's done. Yeah. And then, of course, you have our sponsor, Dennis Carpenter Ford Reproductions, who stamps their own tailgates, their own bumpers. All rubber parts are made in house. They actually use actual Ford dies. Mm -hmm. They don't own those dies. Ford, they're, a, they're on lend to them. Ford actually checks and makes sure that they have those they're certified. every year. Right, exactly right. Wow. Very unique, made in the USA parts. But right. of course, there are some parts, reproduction parts, that do come overseas, but 
That's the way it is. That's you know? the way it is. You know, this is this is an exciting show. You've got so many trucks outside, swap meets, there's vendors, and then you've got these beautiful trucks here on the inside. What I want to know is these trucks here on the inside, what is the awards? What are we looking at today or tomorrow? Well, it's actually Saturday. Saturday, okay. Saturday's award ceremony in the Greenbrier Room. And we've really found and are really comfortable with the awards that we've done the last few years and settled on a, uh, it's actually a front hood emblem, front hem hood emblem. This year they're blue. Uh, they're in the Greenbrier room, so okay. we can take a look at them later. Yeah, definitely. I, I do, do want to um, put them on, uh, one each on display at the counter, just hadn't gotten to that yet. Okay, so we're looking at um, the F100 of the year. What are some of the awards? Okay, we've got a top three truck of the year. Okay. There's too many to have one single truck. So we have a top three. And, and they could be any, they could be any year from 96 and older, all okay. the way to whenever the first one was. Made. Nice. But uh, there are trucks, there are cla their classes. We do a best of class. Mm -hmm. Best of class is, is, is what we call early Ford trucks. Those are the trucks that are earlier, 40s, 1947 and older. That's the Because oh, okay. they don't, they're not called an F1 or F100. 1948 to 1952 were called F1s. Ford called them an F1. 48, 49, 50, and 51. Mm -hmm. Then you have the uh, Fat Fender class, the F100s, yeah. 53 to 56. 53 was the first year of the Ford F100. Then you have the Fridge class. The Fridge class? The Fridge class. No idea what that is. Okay, the Fridge class is, they are called Fridges because they're square, and it was the first year. When, it, when, they, when Ford transitioned from 1956 to 57, they went from a Fat Fender round truck to a more modern square body. Mm -hmm. So those trucks continued from 57 to 60. So that's the fridges. Okay, okay, okay. I'm with you now. Then 61 to 66 became, and they're called slicks today. Slicks. <laughs> yes, because their bodies are similar. It's all about body style. Yeah. That's what that's what makes a class a class. Yeah. The slick truck. They started to get flatter. They they have they have no indentions or impressions on the sides. Okay. Now, then you have the bumps and the dents, and the 67 to 72 trucks are bumps and this gives you an example right here because this line Ford created a bump. Okay. The line is bumped out. Then later the 73 to 79 they're referred to as the dents. That same line on that bump truck is inverted. It's dented in down the truck. You know, the thing that I love, and that's why I do these interviews, everybody, is these are such small, minor differences. Mm -hmm. But every person chooses mm -hmm. a specific truck based on their taste or based on whatever memories and history that they've got with it. And that's what we're going to be finding out. Well, typically today, the older guys have the fat fender trucks. Okay. Because that was more of their time. They're more expensive to build. The more Why is it that the ones that I like, one is the old, really old ones? <laughs> They're more, oh, they're more inexpensive to build. Because <laughs> they they had manual steering, they had uh, leaf springs. So you've got to change they, all they that. Got to you, take, you take a dent truck like this, this gorgeous truck right here, for example, it actually came with disc brakes and air conditioning, power windows, and power signal, or you could get that. Yeah. And so the young folks, these trucks are more readily available. Yeah. And uh, the dents and the bumps are the biggest classes as far as number of trucks here, it, it is the dent and bump class, or bump and dent class. But that's why these fat vendors look so good. Well, they're going up in value. And they're they're going really up going up in value. Yeah. They sure are. I mean, I can remember as a kid buying one for $150. Wow. My blue truck, my, my father paid $150 for that. Yeah. Uh, that same $150 truck would be, could be running there for like $10,000. Yeah. So that's quite an increase. That's a big increase. Of course, of course the dollar value isn't the same. But, but these, these are some of the most beautiful trucks there are in one place. That's why you're here behind the F100 Grand Nationals. You love them. I love them. You absolutely love them. And I can just see it. Oh, I do. I do. It's a... Uh,
I think it's the coolest thing in the world. Well, to John, me, it's the coolest the awesome, hot rod. You've got the 56, and then you've got the... Um, 53. 53. Big Blue. The Big Blue and the Big Beast. Then the Beast, that's right. And the Beast. And you guys have to see that interview. Where was it that I caught you? Where, where were we at? We were at Run to the Sun at Murder Run Beach. Run to the Sun, that's right. That's right. So we did an awesome interview, and I'm going to put a link in there as well where you can see Joe's truck. It's absolutely beautiful. It's here today as well, so I'll definitely take a little walk around there because... It's beautiful. Awesome. We can check out Smoky Road Rod Shop too. Yep, we definitely will. But hey, we're going to have a look at the veteran ceremony you've got going on here as well, which is going to be time for that. See, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the time. In seven minutes. Seven minutes. I got to go. Let's go and catch that. So let's get my hand. We appreciate everything you guys do. And now, ladies and gentlemen, no matter where you are, if you'll remove your hats and stand up for the playing of our national anthem. Thank you, veterans, for your service. And veterans, if you could stand right there, and if you want to come up and shake these veterans' hands, we appreciate them. And God bless you. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the beautiful Smoky Mountains in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And the Grand National F-100 Show. Powered by Dennis Carpenter Ford Restoration Parts. Also brought to you by... Scott but I absolutely Rogers. love the patriotism that happens here at these American car shows. Always gotta love it. It's brilliant. It's always nice coming to these shows and running into people that I know. Now, Dylan has been on the show a couple of times. We also did a podcast with him and Dina as well. And this guy's all about Mustangs and Fox bodies. And then I see this truck, beautiful 68 Ford pickup. It's awesome. And before I start chatting with Dylan, uh, a bit of an accomplishment for me. As soon as I looked into the motor, I knew it was a Coyote with a Whipple supercharger on it. So I'm getting there. I'm learning. But hey, Dylan, how's it going? Doing good. How you been? Hey, congratulate me first for picking out the motor. Oh, yeah. You were right on the money. You knew exactly what it was. I'm getting there. I'm learning. Oh, you know, yeah. I think 12 months today is literally the anniversary for Rana's Radar. So yep. but I better up my game and learn a bit more. The first um, last year when I was here at the F100s, it was like, wow, that's a cool truck. Wow, that's a big truck. That's lifted. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like, OK, maybe I can pick up the engines. But hey, Dylan, awesome truck. Appreciate it. Before we get into the truck, Mustangs, Fox bodies, tell me about the truck now. How, did, how does that fit in? So uh, I have a good buddy of mine named Wesley Keys. Uh, he has a, an original F100 that uh, he got out of California and a beautiful truck. So he'll take it to car shows and uh, him and I went to cruise the coast, which me and you had seen yep. each other there before. And uh, I had a blast riding around the truck and it was so versatile. You put your cooler in it and just easy to get around and cruise around. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna build one of these. So uh, I bought this truck probably about four to, about four years ago from Tommy Wiley, which is one of the moderators of uh, Fix It Your Way okay. um, on the uh, Facebook page. And so I had it for a little while, ended up found a turnkey truck that actually um, had a push rod motor in it. But what I ended up and did is I rode it around for a little while and I was like, if I do not get rid of this truck, I'll never build this one. Mm -hmm. So I sold it probably two years ago and got hot and heavy on this in 2020. And obviously everybody knows during, during those times it's a little harder to get parts and whatnot. So it took me a little while to get really going, but October of uh, last year, uh, we really got hot and heavy on it, went to paint and body. And uh, this is Coon, my head, I call him the head CEO of Stang Racing. So he's hey, one of my, how's it going, Coon? Good. My helpers and builders of the truck that so me and him spent, we would say we come up with eight solid weeks. Eight weeks. Eight solid weeks after, uh, after work, our regular jobs. We hit it in the evenings and the weekends, and we did it wow. for eight solid weeks. The build is right now one week old, so Saturday we did take it to our first car show. Uh, and that was the first time I've actually drove it, it was wow. Saturday of last that, year. I mean, for starters, Coon, Dylan, eight weeks, you guys were working hard. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And we were trying to, you know, uh, place everything, making sure that this came in and that came in and all the parts, you know, organized to make in at certain times. Yeah. But 
Yeah, it was a little stressful. Well, I bet it was. I bet it was. Now, four years ago when you got it, it was still drivable because you took this for a drive. Four years ago, it was not. It was. A, it, I had the motor in it, uh, but it was just an older, older combination. Um, the truck itself uh, needed a little work. It was a pretty solid truck, but uh, yeah, this there's probably not a bolt on it that hadn't been replaced. Wow. So there is, there is not. There is not. <laughs> Can we get a test to that? Yeah, he, he <laughs> does. He's not gonna forget those eight weeds. <laughs> there, there is not an original bolt, nut, screw on the truck. Wow. That's, no. Wow, it looks magnificent. I just can't believe you guys did this in eight weeks. Yeah, it was it was, <laughs> it was yeah. a lot of work. And we had, I we think had that's a, the shortest that I've ever heard. We had a couple other guys. Uh, Joe, this is Joe's truck, which is Coyote Swap. He came over and helped us do some wiring. Um, but he works off, so we had him for probably a good solid three or four days, yeah. probably a week in total. And he helped us wire, wire the truck up in, in pretty much one weekend. And then after that, we've had another guy named Eric. Uh, he comes and helped us do a lot of other things as well. So we had a team effort to do this in eight weeks. Wow. Now, tell me about the Cody engine. You're a big fan of that, I know. I am a big fan. You know, if you've seen them in my Fox bodies, uh, you know, we've talked about the first Coyote motor swap that we've ever done was in 2012. So uh, anybody knows about Coyotes, they come out in 2011. Yeah. So we did one about a year after they came out, we did one in a Fox body. Uh, this is the first one we've done in the truck. Joe had done this on his truck, probably probably had this probably four years. Last year we came to the show with it. And why um, the Coyote for you? Why do you like them so much? Uh, super reliable, uh, make good power. So obviously I put a supercharger on it. The motor in theory is stock other than a billet oil pump and a couple of dress up pieces. But now I have the supercharger, Whipple supercharger on it. It can make, you know, well over 680 horsepower in this nice. combination. Nice. And you have to do that because that's what you're used to. Oh, yeah. You, you can't have, have anything less than 600. Power. Yeah, that, I gotta have that. <laughs> um, is this the battery? What is this that the is going to be the ECM. So that's a Fat Fender Garage um, box that they do make to kind of clean it up where to look. It's just sitting there. And um, ECM set here, all the wires are kind of hidden under the nice. fenders and whatnot. Nice. Okay, I'm loving the color combination. You said it was gunmetal? This is gunmetal on the grill. Your color of the truck itself, um, it obviously has a blue color to it, but it's called till later. And the reason it's called till later is in different uh, sunlight and different shades, it will change to a till green. Nice. So it has a till cover. It's a, um, it's a custom color by uh, Ken Dignett. Am I saying that right? Ken Diggit. Ken Dig. Yeah. So, uh, nice Ken Diggit, yep. <laughs> it's one of his colors that he had mixed up, and nice. so uh, we, we bought that and went with that color combination. Love it. Loving the rims, and I, you've matched it. Let's have a look at the rims here. Beautiful. And what are the rims? They're Holly Rocket wheels. Um, the, the brakes are uh, GT500 rotors with um I, I don't want to tell you but they're corvette calibers can you believe i did that you gonna tell on me you gonna tell i'm on not me? gonna tell on you but you just told everybody yeah i told everybody what's wrong with that nothing's wrong with it they're very inexpensive and they do break really they well look, and they look good and if they break well then they're doing oh, their job right but hey before we look at the tailgate i'm loving the interiors you saw my reaction when i first saw this it's yeah open up the door please mate yeah Look at this, everybody. A week old, Dylan. Congratulations again. This has been done so well. And you did the interiors, you guys? The, interior, well? the interior was done by TMI, which is a company uh, that you can get them to do custom interior combinations. <laughs> so we did make the, um, the color combinations. We picked out how we wanted it and designed it. And at the tail end, we got... Um, the carpet in and some other things in. These guys really helped me right here at the end. I had a, a sales guy named Michael that just really, really helpful in helping me put this thing together in this time frame. Nice. Dakota Digital Dash. Brilliant. And you haven't modernized it too much, which I like. Yeah, we kept some things, you know, older for yeah. sure. give you a little idea of a couple of little small things it does have on it. 
And believe it or not, he's actually parked beside us at Solus Innovations. Uh, we have the bumper um, tuck in. So these bumper brackets right here allow this bumper to tuck in. You see it's really, really close to the body. Well, we're going to come back to what bump means, but Solus Innovations, uh, Matt and Martin, I think it is Matthew and Martin. Yes. Uh, they're on the channel as well, everybody. We had a tour of their shop. Great guys. And what I love the fact is that they make parts that you can just put in yourself. That's right. Now, it's so cool that we talked to them, we interviewed them, saw the shop. Now, here we, you are as a customer. I am a customer, yeah. I have How this. easy was that, using have, their products? I have this, and we also do have their fuel system underneath. And you may be able to uh, get a, a look at it. Um, and that was a custom tank that obviously they make. Um, you yeah. just call them up, tell them what you're looking for. It gave me the adequate fuel that I needed for the Coyote setup being the supercharged. Uh, this is something here that uh, Coon actually made, which allows you to actually put the fuel in it. A lot of people have it in the center of the bed. So. I like it there. I don't, so, I'm not a big fan of having it right in the center. Yeah. Yep. So that's kind of neat. Um, just another one of his fabrications. There's a couple more little secret fabrications on here that he hadn't seen, but uh, pretty neat. Well, tell us. Uh, well, <laughs> the tubs, the, the other trucks. So, so the wheels, I got a super good deal on the wheels. These, these are, um, and you can see on Joe's if in comparison. Um, this is mini tub. So um, you see his tubs, a little smaller. Yeah. These are bigger because I do have a 20 by 12 rim and sitting under it with a really fat tire. Um, and I hate to tell you, we had to do this after the fact uh, because we were basically one finger away on each side. It was just a little too close for comfort and I didn't want the tires to rub the paint. That would have been a fabulous day of the eight weeks. So, uh, <laughs> so it was, the bed was already painted. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was painted and, and so we had to put all. Uh, uh, put collision tape all over the bed and everything, and I started cutting on it. And I, I tubbed it. Yeah, about a day, I was done. Yeah, he had, day, he had it so. done. We started on Friday. By Saturday, we yeah. smoothed it out. By Monday, we had a, a company in Laurel. Yeah, it had um, bed liner in it. They bed lined it for us. Well, and good. What's your background? I am a diesel mechanic. I guess you would say, just fabricator. Nice. Just, just have always. Always that come, and, yeah. come and swap. A uh, come and swap. Got to take that out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know I like that. You know the right people. It's always good to know the right people, right? <laughs> so yeah, can you tell us about yours? What have you got here? Uh, 1972 F250. Oh, with the name of? Hey, the name is Greasy Bob. Is, is Greasy the name, Bob. Yeah, okay. the name of the truck. So. I bought the truck. Oh, I don't know what four years ago yeah. maybe about four years ago it had a fe motor in it, it had a gas motor in it and it it didn't it didn't run real good and we were getting ready to go to cruising the coast and a week before cruising the coast i pulled the engine out freshened it up stuck it back in like two days before cruising the coast and we went cruising the coast and it and drove it around for about three years like that and then uh, found a first gen dodge for sale real cheap and, uh, said shoot i'm gonna come and swap it and everybody says you can't come and swap a two-wheel drive without a bunch of headaches so, right um you I, I, on? I have a headache all the time <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make you different than me but yeah. that didn't detain him it uh it's first gen dodge uh engine transmission uh vintage air uh the thing about a, a Cummins and a two-wheel drive truck is the oil pan's in the way of the suspension. Mm -hmm. So you have to cut the oil pan, fabricate a new oil pan, fabricate a pickup tube, a bunch of stuff you got to do. None of cross members will work. So it's a pretty sizable job. Yeah. Uh, I did this, uh, let's see, this was last year the first year of cruising the coast? Yeah. I've had it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I did it in two months. I did the come and swap. You took, like your eight week works, don't you? Well, I don't think of that. Yeah, that's yeah. It. I, I did it. I did it. To any customer of looking, he's an eight week guy. He's eight week guy. Wow, that is a huge selling point. premium for the eight week package, though. So. Uh, 
It's not wow. nowhere as near as, as pretty as stuff that I've built for other people. So what is it about this that you love? Come over here. Let's get away from that music I a little just, bit. I love the wheels. Look at the spikes. I, I'm a I'm a diesel mechanic, and I do I do uh I do on site repairs. So I have a 08 F450 service truck with a crane and all. That's been about all I've ever done is is is, is service stuff like that. Yeah. So I seen it for sale, and I said, well. Uh, time for me to get another old truck yeah. so and i've got another eight weeks in my pocket so i can yeah it. yeah mine as well i mean that's going to be annoying for people out there who are working months and years on their trucks oh yeah yeah it's uh, good on you <laughs> it it helps to know the trucks okay I cut my teeth on these trucks i was working on these trucks when i was eight or nine years old okay and we uh we grew up in south mississippi I grew up in south mississippi and of course, you know, it's a poor part of the world, poor part of the, the United States. So you had to fix what you had. I mean, mm -hmm. you didn't take it to the shop. If you had to go to work or you had to go to church Sunday morning and it was broke, you fixed it. You fixed it yourself. So, you know, that's that. I guess that gives me a, a little bit of a leg up of being able to work on this stuff. It's, oh, that's a, that's a huge leg up. You know, as you all know, on it very young. It's. I'm going to be doing my truck soon, and I'm so eager to get it done as soon as I can. But God knows how long it's going to take me. A lot longer than eight weeks, that's for sure. And I'm going to have a lot more help than just you know one buddy. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, th this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Is that the exhaust coming out here yes. in the back? Yeah. Yes, that's the exhaust. Well, I mean, when you've got an exhaust that big with that engine, we're going to have to turn it on. You want to hear it? We're going to have to turn it on. Sorry, gotta Dylan, you know, you caught my attention here. got to hear it. you got to hear it. <laughs> That's your diesel for sure. That's awesome. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Ah, oh, Dylan, this has been awesome. Yeah, appreciate yep. it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, I drove past this, well, I rode past it, I don't drive at these shows. Caught my eye, loving the lift on it, and of course, the orange is stunning. The orange trucks are so happening, you know, you got to check out some of the channel, and um, there's so many orange, it just draws your attention. Absolutely loving it. Colton, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, mate. Love your 150. Thank you. So, there's a lot of things that's been done to this. Oh, yeah, a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start with the basics. How long have you had it? Uh... 12 years. 12 years. And 12 years ago, it did not look like this. Uh, no, not all the way. Yes, I drove to high school. It was my first truck. It was your first truck yeah. in high school? Yeah. Okay, it just gets even better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've been working on it ever since. 12-inch uh, lift, 40-inch boggers, uh, weld racing wheels, 466 engine, built C6 transmission. 466 engine. Now, Colton, I'm, I'm a shorty, so I'm going to try and uh, set this camera up. Try to get a look at this. What was the original engine in um, uh, 351? 351. And what did you put in? A 466. 466. And how powerful is that? It's about 500 horsepower. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. First truck in high school, and you that wanted it to lift it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You wanted to make it go. My as daddy had the same truck in high school. It was a green truck, but I've always wanted one because we still got his. And so he, he bought me this, and we jacked it up. Very nice. Love it, everybody. Look, have a look here. You know, the slammed trucks look awesome with the Chevys. Yep. That's my opinion, you know. And the Chevys, I love them. Got to keep them low to the ground, but when you've got a Ford like this, you got to just lift it up high. <laughs> you got to lift it up high. Yep. Now, you've done the lift, awesome wheels. You've painted it and done the interiors as well. Yes, Let's have a look. Oh, nice. Look at that orange being carried through in here. And you've done all of it yourself? Uh, yeah, I got, my buddy painted it. Uh, did some of the body work myself. And 
as far as the my daddy, me and my daddy built the engine and everything under it, lift wise. Wow. And how awesome is this? Your first truck in high school. Yeah. You know, t take us back there when you're driving this. What does it remind you of? Hot days. Hot days? Yeah, uh, but I love it. I mean, it, it, ain't, it, it won't never go anywhere. Where are you keep from? It, uh, Rome, Georgia. Georgia, okay, yeah. okay. We're actually nice. building another one right now for what my daddy. His old truck, we're going to build it back. I'm planning on have, having it here next year. It'll be at the same truck, but that mint green Ford Gold. Mint green, yeah. nice. And the color you told me this, which color was it again? Uh, it's Ford Cobra Orange. Ford Cobra Orange. And you did the paint yourself as well? I did. My buddy painted it. He sprayed it, but okay. man, we both did the body work on it. This is great. I no. mean, obviously you've been around trucks and your dad's been oh, yeah. there to help you, yeah. but this is still an awesome build. A lot and, of time in it. And you like your Fords? Why do you like the Fords? My daddy grew up. That's all we ever had is Fords. That's all you ever had? I like Chevys, but I mean, I wouldn't ever own one. <laughs> he'd probably he'd get up if I ever owned one. <laughs> He loves Chevys, but he's never going to own one. Because what, your dad might disown you? Or? Oh, he probably would. He probably would. <laughs> yeah, think about it anyway. Love it. Thank you so much, Colton. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, it's a 49 F6. It was a two-ton truck with a dump bed on it. And we took it completely off the frame. It's sitting on a 98 Ford Explorer 5.0 chassis. The 5.0 chassis is from 96. Seven, I think, until about 01. Extremely high performance. If it's almost four length in the back. It has a factory pannered bar on it, roll um, sway bars, and everything for that they actually put on it. So we left complete chassis. Everything under it is 98 Ford Explorers, running 373 gears with limited slip on it. Nice. And redone the motor and put a five-speed transmission in it. It has air conditioning, all the creature comforts at home. And it's a little old farm truck. Looks like a little old farm truck yeah. from 1949, but it yeah. definitely doesn't drive like one. It doesn't drive like that. And as you can <laughs> see the tires on the back, we had to... Oh, I love the fat tires. Yeah. It's 14 inch wide rims. Oh, nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Raina. Well, Jim, we've got to introduce you first. Okay. So tell us, Jim, where are you from? I am Jim Cox. We're from a little town near Boone, North Carolina, called West Jefferson. And uh, we've been coming here for several years. We run, uh, we are members of a Facebook group called the Blue Ridge Midnight Runners. Yep. And I think you're a, a I member of it. Yep. And we specialize <laughs> in cruise ins and just local activities in the northwest North Carolina and eastern Tennessee. Nice. And so we've got about 5,400 members, I think, in the group now. So it's growing big. Really growing big. So I want to thank you especially, uh, and I'll encourage everybody to come out here and see this fantastic show. There'll probably be a thousand trucks. I think there was over 700 pre registered, according to Joe. Yep. And they cut it off, and it'll be rolling in here for the next three days. So it'll be a, a great time, and you need to come enjoy this spectacle. It is amazing. We love the F100 shows. Yes. Now, you've got to forge yourself mm -hmm. part of the Blue Midnight. Yeah, Blue Ridge Midnight Runners. Blue Ridge Midnight Runners. That's correct. Now, is it just Fords or? No, it's open to anybody. Love it's it. anybody. Any make, model, truck, cars, it doesn't make any difference. It, we're, like I said, as long a, as it's a classic. It, well, you know, classic or hot rods or something. Yep. We're just open up to the cruising culture. Okay. And so, you know, we, we have some cruise ins that we participate in in our West Jefferson town. Uh, in local communities and we advertise other stuff in in northwest North Carolina and eastern Tennessee and like I said it's a it's a great way to gather information of upcoming events mm -hmm. and so uh, we're just we love old cars and trucks I am Ford man I can't help that <laughs> you can't help that well that's yeah. why you're but, here but that's so. <laughs> why I'm here but I love them all I love them all oh I love this it's such like just a vintage it classic is. it is look at the dash everybody so this is 49, the That's dash correct. I'm looking, yeah. 49 F6, which would have been a two-ton truck. Now, the only difference in the cabs between <coughs> the F1, there's no difference in the cab, mm -hmm. but if you look at the front fenders, they have a larger wheel opening yep. to accommodate the larger size tires that was on the three-quarter ton and bigger trucks. 
Everything else, hood, cab, and everything is the same as the F1 all the way up to an F6. Now, you've done something in the bed here. Yes, I have. <laughs> what we had to do, we had to cut three feet. It was a nine-foot bed. So if you look, this is a Ford factory flatbed, extremely rare. I've never seen one. Yes. So what we So did, what trucks were these on? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that come from... Ford in 1949, as you can see it etched in right here with a factory flatbed. And which trucks were they normally on? Were they normally yeah, well, on it could have been you, anything you ordered, probably would have been from a F2 and 3 bigger. Because an F2 is three quarter ton, then F3 would have been bigger than that. Uh -huh. And so you would have had to order it with the flatbed in 49. So what we did was we cut three foot off of it to save the tail portion because that's the most intriguing part. Yep. Put it back on after we took off the three foot. The gas tank actually is now in the bed. Right there in the middle. That's it. That's where we fuel it up. <coughs> and the the other tank that was behind the seat has been removed. And why did you want this bed in particular? Well, because that's the way it comes. Okay. It come with it this bed. With this. It was all one factory unit. And so it just looks cool. It does look cool. Yeah. It stands out. It, it does. looks different. You won't see many flatbeds. And like I said, this is all factory. And it had the tall stake sides on the okay, on the side. Okay, I'm with you now. But we cut it down because it looked more appropriate just to put the, okay. <coughs> the short sideboards on it. I'm wondering there's a few different things happening here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 A whole lot. The chassis, though, is stock 98 Ford Explorer. We just had to adapt the cab, the bed, to fit the chassis. I actually, it only took five weeks. Five weeks? Five weeks. Well done, five weeks. <coughs> we never touched the truck itself. Yeah. Sit in a uh, a guy's basement for 20 years. And the, the cab is just like the day. I haven't done anything. Well, I mean, I can see because you've still got the um, the fuel tank. <coughs> yeah, that's where <laughs> it went. Yeah. But you know, it's there's nothing in there's there. There's nothing in there. Nothing in there. So, it's different. It uh, is different. It, it's, it has the old look plus the modern technology and uh, sounds really good and, and, and runs okay. Well, it would run okay with all the upgrades you've done. Yeah, but it's, it's a very good driver and we drive it everywhere. I wouldn't be scared to drive it, you know, five, six hours. I would take it on the power. I'm going on the power hot rod power tour this year. Okay, nice. But it doesn't have a lot of room in it. It seems like people were smaller back in the 40s than they are now. And it was so, like that with a lot of the older cars. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. And you've got to take stuff with you going. Yes, that's on the exactly tour, right. And, you know, a chance of rain and it'd be hard to keep it back mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take another vehicle and let on. Just in case. Oh, this is beautiful. Thank you, Rain, very much. I love it, Jim. Do what? I love it. Okay, well, well, I very appreciate that. It's nothing special. It's a whole lot nicer vehicles, but it's That's just a, not what it's about. Yeah, that's you, exactly you what this F100 show is about. Exactly. It's not about the nicest. Yes, there's some extremely nice vehicles, yeah. but there's a lot of stuff that people's extremely proud of that they've put together, and that they are cool. That's the beauty of this whole show. It all comes together. And, and I, I can't thank Joe, little Joe and, and Joe Sr. for putting on this event. It's grade A number one. You won't find any better place to come to enjoy three days of F-100s. 100%. Couldn't have said it better myself, everybody. Right. So take a look around me. This is the outdoor place. The concert is right in front of me. We're going to go inside and have a look at some of those other cars. But, Jim, like you said, it's not about... Uh, the flashiest. Mm -mm. You guys know that on the channel, it's not like that at all. But for me, for me, it's about the connection. It's about That's the uniqueness. It. We have the, some of the nicest, most down-to-earth people you'll ever meet right here, and I uh, just enjoy being here. Same here. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Now, of course, this stopped me. I do like the patinas. Roger, how are you today? I'm good. How about you? I'm good, thank you. Before we get into details, tell me what have you got here? It's got a, it's a 63 Ford. They call it the wrong bed truck. It's got to come from Ford with a 60, 58, a 63 cab with a 58 bed. And that's how it came from the factory? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Right, because I saw the sign and it uh -huh. said wrong bed and I said, what does that mean? Uh-huh. So, that is, why, why do they do that? 
Well, they didn't, like I say, they went from a unibody to the to 63 trucks because the unibodies was the cab was built into the bed. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have no beds. So they had some left over from 58. So so, much, so many of these trucks got the 58 bed put on it. Well, there you go. And not just some, only 300. Ma'am. Was it only the 300? That's what I've been told. And you've got one of the 300? Yes, ma'am. That's what we're going to go with. Oh, really? <laughs> All right, let's come here and have a look here. What have you got in the engine? It's a, three, uh, it's a 410. Uh, it's a stroker motor. It was a 300, uh, 351 Windsor, and it's got a stroker kit in it. Have you had this for? I've had this truck for probably about six years. Okay. I retired from NASCAR. Nice. So uh, I never got to do this stuff because I was with them like for 29 years. So then when I retired, I bought this truck and then I put the crown. It's got a crown big front end under it and it's got all four wheel disc brakes. It's four length. It's got C notched and it's on air on all four corners. It looks beautiful. We love the fact that it's on air. Mm -hmm. Now, Roger, yourself in NASCAR, tell me about that. Well, I was Larry McReynolds' car chief. Okay. So I worked for Ricky Rudd, uh, Joe Rutman, Morgan Shepard, uh, all the Bodines, uh, Steve Kinzer, Kenny Bernstein. So, like I say... Well, you've, been, you've been right up there, and yeah. I have so much respect for the crew chiefs. Yes. Because, you know, and uh, I've discovered that only recently through my channel and travels, just the amount of work you guys do and how much responsibility you have when it comes to those drivers and the cars. Right. Keeping them on the laps. Yeah. It's a, uh, like I say, I was his car chief and so I was responsible for everything. Well, I had a responsibility. Yeah. So that was my job. Yeah. So I did that. So, like, going through tech and all that stuff, it was my job. It would got through tech and and so forth. And then I worked in the shop on during the week. And then back then, we worked, we didn't have, we worked in the shop and went to the racetrack. So we worked seven days a week. Wow, and so. with your experience, how quick or what is the time limit that they have to get in and get checked when they do make those pit stops? Oh, well, we was doing them a lot then. Like now, nine seconds. Nine seconds. Four tires and fuel. Nine mm. seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, this it's just, I've, I've been pretty um, amazed with the NASCARs. You know, I was inside the NASCAR uh, just uh, last weekend. That's on the channel. So it's, but what amazes me is the pit stops and what happens. And it's only nine seconds. I knew it was fast, but I didn't know it was nine seconds. Yeah. Well, back then when I was, like, I retired like in 2000. And then we had four lugs. Yeah. They got one lug now. So if we had 16 second stops, we was we was good. Yeah. But if you didn't, if you wasn't in the 15, uh, 16s or the 15s, you got beaten. So it's real important that well, you beat a car out on on a pit stop. Not only on time, but you have to leave a car out, making sure that nothing's going to go wrong. Exactly. You got to make sure all your lugs are tight and, wow. and the wheel don't fall off. So. Well, I appreciate that. Thank yes, you. Yes, so. ma'am. Okay. So. <clears throat> What was the state of this? What color? I mean, we, we know we you painted the patina, uh -huh. but what was the actual state of the pickup when you first started? Well, it was in pretty good shape. I mean, this was original paint that was on the, on the truck. Matter of fact, the uh, the dash and all this all this interior in here, that's all original paint. Wow, that was in good condition. Where was it stored? Mm -hmm. How did you come across this? My wife, she seen it and she wanted it, and so we bought it, and so I took it home, and so we started working on it. Very nice. Love the pin striping. Thank you. And everything on this truck is asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. Whatever's on this side, especially when it comes to the paint. Like on the door handles. Like on the door handle. Mm -hmm. It matches the door handle on the other side, and the hood is on the same. And if you look right here, all this here, the hood's the same on the other side. And up here at the front, if you look right here, this is the same. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's mm -hmm. well done. Mm -hmm. And did you do the page yourself? I did. 
You did this all yourself? Yes, ma'am. NASCAR as to painting cars, like how, how does that fit in? <laughs> yeah, well, it was just something, just something we did. And for some people out there who are trying to get the patina look, what is, what, what is something that you can tell them, some advice? Well, tips? it's just a, uh, just get you something and start with it and just uh, get you an old hood and get you a pattern and just make you a template. Now, I made a template of all this uh -huh. where I know what to do on the other side. So you made that out of like cardboard or paper? Uh, crepe paper. Crepe paper, okay. And I'm loving the windshield. Has there been any customizations done to that? No, it's so that's a, that's how a, it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It feels a lot more wider and bigger. Yeah. So it's got a uh, it's got a C6 Fairbanks transmission, and it, like I say, it's four linked. It's a 373 gear, and it's uh, it's on air all the way around with four wheel disc brake. <clears throat> People comment on my cooler; they don't know that's my battery box. <laughs> I've seen that one before. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like driving more? Getting inside a NASCAR or getting inside your classic pickup? Well, I like these old trucks, but like I say, I was with NASCAR so long, and then yeah. like I won over. That's in your blood. Yeah, like you need yeah. to hear that sound and yeah. feel that speed. Yeah, and I won over 200 races myself. So nice. I was a driver and a, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow, that's amazing. Congratulations yeah. on that. Brilliant. And always a Ford guy? No. Okay, I, that's, I like to hear yeah, that. I, I like uh, to hear that. Good. Yeah, I was always worked for Chevrolet teams. Well, okay. well, Quaker State Buick. Yep. And then the, uh, the Earnhardt's were the Chevrolet's. And then did work for Davy Allison. He had the Ford Thunderbirds with Robert Yates racing. You're a car guy. Yeah. And then Alan Kowicki <laughs> yep. helped Alan, and he had a Ford. So it's been Ford Chevrolet's. And so, but I've always, my, my trucks and stuff that I drive at home is Chevrolet's, and so. There you go. Uh -huh. But <laughs> you this go. truck here is our, our, a Ford truck, and like I say, we really met some interesting people with this truck, and it's just been, it's like part of our family now. So. Mm -hmm. Once you see it, you're never gonna forget it. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not there's there's not another one like it. There you go. And where are you from, sir? Greenville, South Carolina. Well, easily South Carolina. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, anytime I'm there, if I see it, I'll know that's Roger's truck. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. All righty.